Hello everyone and uh, thank you for joining us today for the last appointment of the um, AER Art for the Environment conversation series. We are actually expecting more people but uh, we should start and hopefully people will join the space um, while I start introducing. So my name is Camila Palestra, I'm the Associate Curator at the Center for Sustainable Fashion and I'm the curator of the Art for the Environment conversation series at UAL. The series expands on the Art for the Environment residency program, which was launched in 2015 by Professor Lucy Orta, with the aim to explore environmental and social concerns that define the 21st century through art and design. So while the physical residencies were and still are on pause because of COVID-19 restrictions, we invited our partners across the world and UL students and graduates to share their experiences and discuss how art and design can be catalysts for change in a climate and social emergency. For those of you interested to know more about the residency program, um, we can put the link in the chat box as well as the link to the recordings of all the previous uh, conversations. So today I'm very pleased to be introducing our fantastic guest, Francesco Mazzarella, a colleague from CSF and Making for Change Walton Forest uh, project leader and Hyatt Maynell artist, a UL alumna and former AER resident at Walton Forest London. Nicole Sisman was meant to be with us today to present her projects, but unfortunately um, she had to decline last minute. So Francesco Mazzarella is a research fellow in fashion and design for social change at the Center for Sustainable Fashion at UAL. Exploring ways in which design activism can create counter narrative towards sustainability in fashion. Previously, Francesco was a HRC Design Leadership Fellow Research Associate at Imagination, Lancaster University, with the aim to support design research for change. Francesco was awarded a PhD from Loughborough Design School, funded by the HRC Design Star CDT. His doctoral research project explored how service design can be used to activate textile artisan communities to transition towards a sustainable future. Hyatt Meynell is a multidisciplinary artist working with sound, installation, drawing, photography and printmaking. The sound and feel of place and space are important. Often working with local residents, she explores the politics of walking, public sitting, boundaries and gentrification. Recording, measuring and analyzing thresholds as, pl as places of transition and sites of potential conflict. During lockdown, the site, the site for work has out of necessity become housebound. Routine and repeated tasks map out a familiar suburban schedule. A juggling act of paid work mothering, teaching, daily walking, cleaning and cooking. Recent work represents the home as boundary mixed with feelings of lethargy and claustrophobia. So just before um, handing it over to Francesco, a couple of um, housekeeping notes. Your mic and camera should be kept off during the, uh, during the event. Um, which will last approximately an hour and we will have after the presentation we will have time for Q&A. &A. You're welcome uh, and uh, very much encouraged to use the chat box to put your questions and comments anytime and also during the Q&A if you want to ask your question in person you can raise your hand and unmute yourself. Um, and finally, a reminder that the conversation is being recorded and will be um, available on the YouTube channel of the Postgraduate Community at UL. So now I would hand it over to Francesco. Hi everyone, uh, can you hear and see me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, thanks Camilla for the introduction. Uh, actually, I'd like to start with sharing the film, a short film about making for change. Camilla, would you like to share it please? and then I will start my talk. Yeah.
Is it okay, Camila, for you to share the film? Yes, it's coming up. We cannot see it yet. Uh, Yeah, okay. Do others can can others hear the audio? I can't personally. No, should we, should I try again then? Uh yeah, I can't uh, yeah, no audio uh, also for myself and Harriet is saying the same. Otherwise, I can start the presentation. Sorry about that. Um, let me try again, Francesco. Okay, yes. Let's see if this time works. Let me know. Mm -hmm. Yes. Making for Change Waltham Forest is a partnership project between uh, London College of Fashion and Waltham Forest Council. And uh, do you remember, Laura, how did it all start? I bumped into Lorna Lee, who's the Director of Culture and Heritage for London Borough of Waltham Forest. And we started talking about London Borough of Culture and how it might be a great opportunity for London College of Fashion to start a sort of partnership or a collaboration with the borough. This project uses fashion and making to activate uh, a positive change in the borough, but also with a long-term legacy. It comprises a program of activities in relation to education, manufacturing, community engagement. And for London College of Fashion, it's a real opportunity for us to connect to local schools. This resource for 16 to 18 year olds, it offers um, an opportunity for students to engage in what sustainability means. So it's about looking at what is going on in fashion now and what will happen in 2030. The team has come in from London College of Fashion with a great deal of resources which we'll be able to use for the future. And that also raises possibilities, aspiration, maybe even understanding what careers might look like in, in different industries like fashion. It's fulfilling a gap and a need, but also encouraging other learning. So the other key strand was manufacturing, wasn't it? So we had a great opportunity to uh, have three members of staff at London College of Fashion to undertake residencies in uh, fashion design and manufacturing businesses. So one of these researchers is looking into recommendations for policy for sustainable fabric manufacturing. Another one is exploring sustainable innovation and technology. And another is about revitalizing craft heritage skills. In the shoe trade, all of your shoes are made on different shapes and I have to make the shapes which cut the shoes out. I'm the only person in London now trying to keep the thing going. I've contacted local schools um, for young people to come to workshops with Steve to see what he does and hopefully they'll be inspired to continue on this legacy of creating a product that will last their whole life. So of course community engagement is really important to us. We've empowered people to actually enhance their well-being, learn new skills and contribute to sustainability. Tackling social issues like deprived youth, uh, skills shortage, fashion manufacturing decline and unemployment. This project is about empowering women and kind of teaching them how to make coats either for themselves or for donating them. We really want to teach them with how to make a jacket that's really kind of a multi-use. You then can reverse so you can kind of wear it in multiple ways. It's probably also easier if you have multiple children and different outfits. As a parent, as a resident, what I can say bringing into Wall from Forest, skill, unity, creating a bond among women, this is a very powerful thing. And then, of course, there's the opening of the first fashion hub at Arbeit Studios at Leighton Green, which will provide long lasting legacy for local employment, but also for our students as well. So the main elements of the partnership plan are between London College of Fashion, Fashion District and uh, Waltham Forest Council are really around how we can help businesses thrive and the fashion industry grow within the borough.
We are in the heart of Leighton here in an old supermarket and what transformation it's had into the Arbeit Studios Leighton Green. It's full of creatives, it's providing a presence on our high street. People are walking past and staring and it's a fantastic transformation for this area. The project provides a great model for us to use going forward with other partners, particularly in relation to our move to Stratford. Yeah, and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Waltham Forest Council, the London Borough of Culture, the Great Place team, and everybody really working on this project. Students, staff, the local community, the businesses. It's been a great opportunity, actually. I agree, it's fantastic. I mean, I think here and I will show you. Okay, uh, can you see the slides now, I guess? Yeah. Yes, Francesco, we can see it. Thank you. Okay, yes, uh, actually I hope, I wanted to show the film because it's a really participatory action research project and they wanted to show you through the voices and uh, the, the, the faces and all the people involved, actually. Uh, so as you have understood from the film, uh, this was a partnership project between London College of Fashion and Waltham Forest Council and we used fashion and making to activate positive change in the borough, uh, but also to activate legacies within the community. Uh, so also, um, I wanted to say that uh, since I joined the Centre for Sustainable Fashion and in light of uh, the move of the college to the Olympic Park in 2023, I'm part of the East, uh, East London Placemaking Working Group. So uh, for us, it was very important to make connections with organisations across East London instead of being parachuted into the local community without any relevance to the um, to the borough and it was through that that uh, i created this partnership with walton forest council uh, at the time when they were um, about to be elected the very first london borough of culture in 2019 and so through fashion and making we engaged with uh, students from local schools fashion and manufacturing businesses and residents as well as uh, hard to reach groups and with the hope to, with the ambition to develop and retain creative talent, but also address locally experienced issues such as deprived youth, a skills shortage, decline of fashion manufacturing, and also high rates of unemployment. Uh, so uh, throughout this project, we delivered a wide range of activities in relation to education, manufacturing, and community engagement in response to the themes of makers, fellowship, and radicals that were. Uh, the themes of the London Borough Culture 2019. <laughs> uh, through this project, we delivered uh, uh, teaching resources uh, for schools across all levels of education, from primary, secondary, FE colleges, and also higher education, with, the, for example, the collaborative challenge uh, for AMA students at LCF. And also, we worked with uh, a special needs school that caters for students who have um, uh, emotional and mental uh, health issues. And uh, these resources have, uh, uh, are shared uh, open source for teachers to download and use them. And also um, through this project, through the Innovation Challenge, for example, um, a cash prize was awarded to one school to contribute to delivery, uh, to development of the curriculum. Uh, but also, uh, and overall, uh, 130 students participating in these project activities. Uh, we also had uh, three members of staff at LCF undertaking research residencies with three uh, fashion manufacturing businesses, Cactus Leather, Black Horse Lane Ateliers and Wagadam Textiles. So uh, Stephen Jones from Cactus Leather is the last remaining clicking tool press maker um, in London. And uh, Xandra Drupal from LCF learned this craft skill and created an exhibit, a, pub a, a public exhibition but also delivered a series of workshops to pass this uh, uh, craft skill to the younger generation and also provide an extra source of income for the business. Uh, Anna Schuster, uh, who graduated from LCF, uh, developed a feasibility study for Black Horse Lane Ateliers to implement a wash lab, which uses laser technology to reduce water and energy consumption in the process of finishing on jeans. And then Black Horse Lane Ateliers have received a, a follow-on grant and they are now establishing this wash lab in East London. And Anna Fitzpatrick uh, collaborated with Waglan Textiles, which is uh, one of the oldest fabric manufacturers in London, uh, and uh, collaborated also with the All-Party Parliamentary Group for Ethics and Sustainability in Fashion to develop a policy recommendation to encourage the use of recycled polyester in the fashion industry. 
And then also we work with uh, members of the local community at different levels to inform them, involve them, collaborate and empower. Um, through, this, uh, uh, through these initiatives, over 1,550 people uh, took part in, in these activities, mostly upcycling pre-consumer fabric waste and co-create fashion artifacts. Members of the local community learned different skills and, uh, for example, the most uh, uh, powerful initiative in terms of uh, community engagement was Forest Codes that taught women from the local community to uh, upcycle uh, uh, fabric waste and make uh, children uh, coats for donation or for their own children. Uh, this project contributed to raising uh, people's awareness of sustainability issues in the fashion industry. For example, uh, the Jen Green to, uh, team from uh, uh, LCF uh, became a finalist in the Green Gown Award. Uh, also, uh, young people from local schools gained experience in craftivism and, for example, Nicole Zisman, who unfortunately can't be here today, through the Art for the Environment residency, uh, explored through fashion uh, issues of personal identity and cultural diversity within a climate emergency context. Uh, or also, uh, we had uh, the performance I Wanna Be Me, I Wanna Be You, that demonstrated fashion activist uh, and environmentalist agenda within the context of Brexit. This project also contributed to empowering people through the learning of new skills. Uh, for example, the uh, special needs uh, uh, school uh, um, pupils uh, enhanced their behavior and also their confidence over the course uh, through participation in the fashion clubs. Uh, the um, manufacturers hosting their researchers in residence also felt that they had a stronger voice in the fashion industry. And uh, overall, um, the uh, women participating in forest codes uh, also uh, felt, uh, expressed that they enhanced their uh, confidence and felt more empowered, as well as more connected to fellow community members. This project also contributed to uh, opening up career pathways and enhance uh, the understanding of the young people of the, over the wide range of careers available to them in the fashion industry. Um, for example, uh, through this project, uh, three ex-graduates from LCF developed a um, startup F, um, sustainable fashion brand and they've established their business in the Arbeit Studios Leighton Green, contributing to the commercial sector of the borough. And also Olivia, uh, who uh, was an ex-LCF student, through the experience of working with Forest Coats, uh, she decided to change her business model into that of a community interest company. So she's continuing working with me and Walton Forest Council to deliver workshop for the local community. And also, in terms of community engagement, the most uh, um, this project contributed to um, for the local community to gain social agency, uh, feel more connected, and also the local community uh, engage with the work that we do at London College of Fashion before we move to the Olympic Park in a couple of uh, of years' time. Uh, but the most powerful project in terms of community engagement was Forest Codes that provided a safe space away from challenges for members of the local community to come together and, uh, uh, and enhance their well-being. And also this project contributed to piloting cross-sector partnerships, uh, for example, across different departments uh, at LCF and in the Council. And we co-designed a partnership plan that uh, outlines the vision for making Waltham Forest as a place where fashion businesses and people can thrive. We also created a core partnership with our Vice Studios Leighton Green and we transformed a disused supermarket space into a fashion hub uh, which uh, houses uh, 13 fashion startups and also a communal area where we deliver cultural initiatives for the local community. And this is surely a long lasting legacy for this project. So to conclude, uh, this project demonstrated how fashion activism can be used as an approach to respond to locally experienced issues and trigger participation across organizations. Also, beyond the time frame and funding of this activist intervention, uh, it is fair to say that we are activating long-lasting legacies. Uh, of course, this project also demonstrated the challenges that as a fashion activist I had to face whilst activating change from within the system. Another approach could have been to activate change from outside the system, but because this was a partnership with a local authority, I prefer to adopt a quiet or indirect form of slow activism as an embedded and situated approach to uh, activate meaningful social innovation. 
And in this context, uh, my position as an outsider and also insider it was beneficial to help people think and do things differently. And on the other hand, I was also I could also benefit from uh, previous knowledge of the borough, having leave, uh, lived in Walton Forest for a period. Uh, but also reflecting on my role, I defined my approach middle up down because I created bridges from the bottom up initiatives of the local community and the top down support of the local government. And finally, whilst uh, I all the aim was to enable change in others, I also acknowledge that uh, I also uh, undertook a process of change in myself. And finally, Looking forward, uh, we actually uh, recommended there is scope for uh, developing this approach further and build a placemaking model that can be transferable also in other boroughs. We are continuing working uh, between LCF and the Council and take joint actions to enable a thriving industry. We're also mapping out existing programs across the borough to uh, better develop them, learning from the experience from this project. We are also developing a strategy to communicate the unique story of the local makers and raise the profile of the sectors. And finally, we hope that we have inspired others in using fashion to activate change within their communities and shape a more sustainable future. And finally, it's just thanks to the aligned values, creative skills and continu continued engagement of a network of makers, fellows and radicals that positive change could be activated. Thank you. And I welcome any uh, questions uh, in the Q&A time. Thank you. Thank you, Francesco. And um, it's always impressive to hear about the project. And every time I hear, every time I learn more, there are so many aspects. Uh, it's so complex. Um, what was the timeline, in fact, of the of the project from start uh, to end? It was uh, about uh, one year, but actually it was anticipated. It was a first phase, phase one. For three months, I did a residency from the town hall in order to co-design the project together with different departments, culture, regeneration, education and business growth. And I think that was very crucial to really uh, map out existing initiatives, both in the co uh, borough and also in the, at, at LCF and co-create the project together with them. And then over 2019, for the whole year, we delivered initiatives. And then, yeah. of course, there was Very also... Short. And then in 2002, so it's not stopped, it's not ended, actually, but uh, we are working on some follow-on initiatives that I can tell you more if, in the Q&A. Absolutely, yeah. And we, we will go back to, to the project and to the legacy and a new initiative. Um, I would hand it over to Hyatt now before rejoining all together for the Q&A. Hi, Hello, everyone. Can you uh, see me? Right, I'm going to just stop showing my presentation. Um, right. OK, so thanks for the introduction, Camilla. I'm Harriet, um, and I was artist in residence at um, Leighton Green uh, in 2020 as part of the AER residency. In fact, I was very lucky I managed to finish the residency just before lockdown finished. Um, uh, sorry, it started. So uh, I was extremely lucky to actually manage to conclude my time there. Um, all right, next slide. Right, so um, as Camilla said, I'm uh, an alumni. I graduated from CSM in 2019. Um, in fine art and my practice is walking based and social engaged but it's kind of multidisciplinary as well i like making lots of things um uh, printmaking drawing uh, but also sound and installation and um, with some sculpture sometimes thrown in so um it's kind of a multidisciplinary uh, practice and at the time when i applied for the residency I, and i still am actually uh, I was interested in the defensive boundaries and sort of how cities work, sort of the architecture and defensive, uh, defensive architecture and the boundaries and whether I could move things I've been working on in zone one around sort of King's Cross area into zone three and four. So where Waltham Forest, where the studios were based. And so that was one of the elements of my proposal. Um, I was awarded the residency in 2019 and I was on site in place so this picture is showing uh, where the Arbite studios are um, in Leighton Green. It's in East London, in East 10, uh, E10, um, and I was there from January to March. 
Um, I work part time, so I was basing myself at the studios part time as well. And uh, the approach I took was, so whilst I put a proposal together, um, it, it, things change. And so you don't really know what you're going to do until you're actually physically in a space. And so my approach was to walk uh, a photograph and really look at the details of where, where I was in the immediate area around uh, the studios in that E10 sort of area of Waltham Forest. And um, with my sound recording equipment, I collected sound. So um, the sound, soundscape is extremely busy. There's lots of traffic. There's also a few little parks. There's some Quaker um, houses nearby. You know, so there's a whole range of um, sounds that you can that give you a sense of a place, actually. And that's how I took the approach. It was a lot of walking and just really looking at the details and recording them in any way that I, um, I could. And also in the studios, there's quite a big communal space that is used by Waltham Forest for lots of different things. Actually, Francesco men mentioned as well, some of those programs are running in there. And so I also talk to people that um, use those spaces um, to get a sort of sense of what was going on and what they were interested in. Um, you know, and as an artist with a socially engaged practice, it is always a dilemma. Um, you don't want a helicopter in somewhere that's quite complex with people that have quite complex uh, and different needs to yourself. Is how do you socially engage in such a short time? Um, you know, residences don't give you much time, and so you have to be very careful with your approach, and and you need to find a, a way in and an angle. And so. I didn't have that initially, and so I was still, the, the collecting phase of uh, took quite a while, uh, I would say. Um, but th then, you know, I did find an angle in the end, which I'll come on to. Um, I was very lucky. The residency came with a studio. Uh, I don't have a studio of my own, uh, and as somebody who makes a lot, uh, it was really useful to have somewhere to kind of collect all this evidence that I was finding, not evidence, uh, the sources that I was looking at uh, any you know at any one time I could put them on the studio wall and that space uh, was dedicated for me uh, so it's very lucky so even though there was a communal area I had one end down the end of the, the studios and was able to use that space in any way I wished really and so this is just one picture of what the walls looked like at one point they did change um, uh, nearly every week um, but you can see I kind of printed took quite a lot of photographs and um, to those off and sort of playing around with that and actually there on there is a gang map as well of um, the borough uh, and so sort of thinking about the sort of boundaries within Waltham Forest itself. It looks a bit of a mess but it, it all came together in the end. Um, so how did it fit with art in the environment? So the residency was obviously quite focused on um, fashion when I looked at the when to apply when I was looking to apply but because uh, the social engagement element of my practice I thought actually you know what I, I do do art in the environment in just a different slightly different way um, I'm an ex-economist and I'm really interested in how cities and people fit together and what works for, for what things work for whom and how our place within the city and sort of the written and unwritten rules with which we live by um, and also the politics, the public and private spaces in, in the urban setting uh, and, it, and the changes of behaviour that that kind of makes. Um, so for, my, for this residency, my focus was um, the urban environment right near the studios. I thought I'd focus it down. Waltham Forest is a really big borough um, and it's got lots of different elements to it, of some of which are gentrified and other parts that are not. And, but the, uh, the place around where the studios are is um, quite a poor area. It's got quite a lot of um, council housing still and um, quite shabby shops. Um, so that's where my immediate focus was. And uh, my aim was uh, to make something that was sort of relevant to the people living there and involving them as well. So I wanted to work with local people in some way. Um, and so that's the, the approach. And that's why I think it fitted with the are in the environment ethos of the actual program. Um, right. So in terms of social engagement, saying the dangers of sort of helicoptering in when you're in a short um, residency, you've got to be really careful of, of, of that and be aware of your own privilege as well as an artist. So my angle um, that I, I took 
uh, I thought actually it's a shop, the, the facades of the shops are the thing that was really interesting to me. And um, there's not many places in London that have such a um, run of shops still actually that look quite shabby in their entirety. Um, you know, lots of places, I live in zone four and even my high street in Palmer's Green is, um, there's, you know, there are some fancy shops down there, coffee bars and, you know, um, French delis and etc. Whereas in the area of the green, there are not any of those. Um, so it is sort of quite a, on the face of it, and that's the whole point, on the face of it, they do look quite a shabby set of shops. And so I, I started talking to the shopkeepers in the immediate area um, about sort of the, the sad and happy anecdotes and what they sold, the most expensive thing, the cheapest thing, and you know what the sort of some of the happy stories that they had and 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 a lot of those people and i'm entire i'm so grateful for them for for contributing to the project uh many of them agreed to be kind of recorded in those conversations that i had with them um and uh, and they knew that i was going to be able to soundscape based on some of the the, the conversations that they were having with me um and it, i think it's when you're working on site specifics, uh, one thing I would say it really came across as sort of the sense of place by having these conversations and also the sense of community. A lot of the people that worked in these shops have been there for many years. And um, so whilst the, the facade of the shop doesn't look much, actually, when you go behind the glass and chat to people, they, they got a huge amount of knowledge about the area and um, just some hilarious stories and also some terribly sad ones as well and also how hard it is actually to be running a short small shop um you know and that really came across so um so that was one element of my residency um the next element was is related but it's the facade so um there is lo loads of scaffolding in that area of london um and lots of it's covered in sort of tarpaulins uh, and and in the sort of in parallel, there's you know I became really obsessed with the colours of um, the paint colours of gentrification. So E17 is sort of the Walthamstow boundary um, within the borough, and that's just on a road right near the studios. And it was really noticeable that on the side where the E10 side where the studios were, it was the dowdy run of shops, and on the other side there was all heritage paint jobs on all these buildings and this picture is actually the order with which uh, those buildings the colors of those buildings just on the other side of the crossroads and so it's like a visual real visual sign of um, gentrification um, uh, and redevelopment so i kind of the the color thing stayed in my mind and i became really obsessed with it and went around b&q and picked up loads of um, the paint cards, like hundreds of them without getting arrested, um, thinking I might use those later. Um, and then the Arbite Studios, as Francesco said, is a fashion hub. And so when you're making alterations for clothes, it really implies sort of mending and improving improvements, making better, you you know, and it's sort of a positive thing. Whereas my, my view on scaffolding is um, behind the tarpaulins, there's some an amazing kind of redevelopments going on. But when the tarps come down, is it actually an improvement? Yeah, it might be kind of a glossy front of a building, um, but is it actually an improvement? And so it was that idea that I took as the basis for the final work within the, my residency, sort of playing with the facade and, you know, and is is the change a better better thing for people that actually live in that area? So as very lucky um the studio the residency kind of enabled me to have a, a show in an enormous space within the um studio's site daunting to be honest it was such an enormous place um to fill um and i what i did i kind of played on the sense of the facades and i basically recreated the high street in a sort of pastel aesthetic um made uh, with paper and photographs and hung from scaffolding uh, and there were other elements within the, the show as well, which will come on. There's a little video I'm going to show. But, um, you know, it, it was a massive space and I was lucky that there was a budget, a bit of a budget that came with the residency. So I could spend that on printing things really large and also getting scaffolding in the space, kind of create a jeopardy of is it being redeveloped or is this building, this old supermarket where the studios are based, is that being redeveloped? And some people thought, oh, no. There it is, it's, it's, the change is happening there already. 
um, and so I created a show and I was extremely lucky that we managed to get do the show just before lockdown and I was actually taking it down the week that everything closed it was a surreal experience but um, yeah it was a really great experience I'm gonna the last we're going to go on to the last one. I'm going to show you um, so you can see my scaffold my scaffold obsession you know bounds I took loads of photographs but it's extremely uh, sculptural as far as I'm concerned um, Camilla if you could share it, there's a little video of, of a um, summary I'm going of, to the video. The, um, of the show it's just because uh, obviously I did a soundscape so you can't really get a sense of it without hearing something so it's just a two and a half minute clip of um, a bit of the show and the sound um, the, the sound thing was actually a longer piece, it was about um, nine minutes altogether, um, but you will get a sense of it from this clip. These row shops used to be little shops. Uh, Next the door is now residential. The cat on the end is now residential. I predict so this was a that, little you know, probably all these shops will become residential sooner or later. Um, but we're, we're pretty it's reasonably priced. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I feel like doing uh, yeah. uh, uh, so you here. Well. Well. You can't afford uh, not to come in here. <laughs> because we are our head. Like we are quite a bit Because this area hasn't always uh, been here. Okay. Shape up. You can see the changes well. Just with the machine. How much is that? It is five pound for the hair and six pound for the beard. Oh, that is the... Too many. I'll give you a price. <laughs> this one after this the all very thing is, no I'm, not even, my my rent. I'm not even covering my rent. I'm not even covering my wages. Is business, business, business is really dead. Yeah. 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 Uh, so far, it's not a regular line, but I have so that two points. There's lots of characters that come in here. You know, I've been extremely lucky. You know, um, and I've felt I've felt love from them all over the years, 25 years nearly now. Funny things happen in the shop. So in more basically you can say every day there is a funny thing. I'm the all the customer will respect. Yeah, go on, we'll check. I'm respect all customers. All somebody from his The the saddest thing is like one Someone shows you no respect. I'm really under the pressure now. Really, really. You know, all good things must come to an end at some point. I think that was my last slide. Yep. Yep, that's me. Um, thank you. Thank you, Harriet. Um, Really fantastic work, fantastic project, and um, again impressive um, how much you achieved in such a short amount of time. <laughs> and um, I was quite fascinated by these questions that you used for the to the, ask to the shopkeepers um, about the sad and happy anecdotes, and uh, what is it the most expensive and the cheapest. Um, uh, piece they they sold um, so I wanted to ask you about how you um, came up with these questions and what kind of um, narratives or stories were you expecting to create through uh, the responses and also something you touched upon the um, um, you know the difficulties of uh, being socially engaged when parachuted into a new community uh, especially in such a short time so i wanted to um, know more from you how you approach how you encounter any ethical issues um 
So what was your approach in this sense? Mm -hmm. uh, and meanwhile, I will encourage also our participants to ask questions, to use the, the chat box, and we will facilitate the Q&A. Hi. Okay. okay, so in terms of the questions, because the shops were so diverse, I thought, right, well, how am I going to kind of tackle this? Because they're so different. But I, so I thought I need to keep it simple, and I just want um, open questions where if they weren't really engaging, they could just sort of say like a one sentence thing. But actually, um, you know, I thought if it was an open question, they, some people might say more. So I didn't know before. And I obviously asked people because um, you're engaging with members of the public. I thought if I keep it simple in terms of just say these are the questions I want to ask. There's no strings attached. This is it. There's no other question. There's no ulterior motive. Um, would you be prepared to answer those on being sound recorded? I found that that was the best approach rather than if I'd have gone into um, kind of saying, can I have a conversation with you and can we record that? That puts people off, I think. You just need to be quite direct in a way of like really open, like this is, this is the only thing I want to ask you. Um, and, you know, you can have a little think before we go onto the camera, you know, not camera, but onto the sound piece. Um, but ultimately, don't think about it too much. Just say it. And uh, and I was just really lucky. I once I did the first few, I thought, oh no, these questions are the best ones because I couldn't believe the answers I was getting. People were so honest. I mean, a guy was telling me about his depression and he was making no money. You know, and, and uh, it's unbelievable how open people were. And and um, I was really really lucky. Um, I found some people that were really open. And um, and I did, was introduced to. Um, a hairdresser who's the lady who'd been there for 25 years and she was amazing so I've actually got her voice in that quite a lot and she I did talk to her at length and she was happy with that she was she was basically the sort of Waltham Forest sort of counsellor doctor everything she was an amazing woman and uh, and she was really happy with the sound piece that we created um, yeah, so it, it's, and I did come up with a moral issue. Um, obviously, I was very open with people saying that I was going to record it and that I was going to put on a soundscape and this is where it's going to be shown. But the, the guy that um, said about his depression, I was very careful when in the edit not to um, kind of identify him. So I had, and I did toy whether I should put that in at all, but I thought it was so powerful that I couldn't not put it in, but I was very careful not to attribute anyone specific comment to somebody you know and I didn't put the whole thing that he said he said quite a whole, quite a long piece about that and I just put the the sort of final line really so yeah you can't helicopter and you'll be really sensitive so I was really happy that the shot angle worked for me um it really did it, in a good way because it's something that you you know you're on an equal footing you know they've got, they've got their shop um they're sitting in their place of you know that they know I'm not asking them to come to a studio. I'm not sort of putting up fancy lighting or, um, you know, funny microphones. You know, I just my my sound recording equipment's quite small. It's not, you know, it doesn't put people off. I think if you have too much equipment, sometimes you get a different reaction. Um, and I found that just having a handheld recorder it, it is good for this kind of work. Yeah, less in intimidating for sure. Um, yeah. Did they did they come to the opening? Did they come to see the final work? Yeah, the, they did. Some of them came to the opening, and actually more came during the week that it was on. Um, yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, it was good, really good. In fact, the, the hairdresser did come, and she liked it. And I, I shared it with her before, just so she knew that I, because I used quite a lot of her voice. But uh, yeah, they did come. Yeah. Thank you. Um, is there any question from the participants from the audience? Any comment? Francesca? Maybe, yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, whilst we wait for, I definitely would love some questions for the audience, but uh, uh, Harriet's work always make me uh, think a lot. So actually as well, I wanted to also, I always often reflected on the issues of being an insider or an outsider. And I also say that uh, the role, I wanted to emphasize the role of the gatekeepers. And in a way, I think uh, for Harriet was also instrumental that there was a common room 
in that space and they provided that with access to participants. And so these local for in my case, often like in the three months of residency that I also did, the council provided me with access to the local organizations, but there are really these local uh, like uh, community um, uh, gatekeepers that really provide us with access to participants and they're very crucial in this type of work. Um, and then, uh, uh, in just to clarify as well, making for change Walton Forest was very much uh, focused on passion. But uh, and the first, uh, uh, the brief was very much about using passion. That's why Nicole's uh, was selected first. But the regeneration team in the council loved Harriet's work, and actually, as well, this emphasizes also how an artist like Harriet um, can also have a role in uh, in local government. And I can really see her work uh, very suitable to. Uh, working in, a, I mean, as a consultant or, a, a, or an inspiration even for a regeneration team in local government. Um, and then I really, uh, as well, some of the conversations that came in Arit's uh, uh, talks uh, with the shopkeepers also emerged a lot in the fashion industry. So when I worked with uh, fashion manufacturers, everybody was really worried to lose their um, factories or their buildings because the, there is a big push in turning everything into flats. Uh, so yes, yeah, so many so many parallels, and, and as well for our bite studios, Leighton Green, it was as well a local asset, an ex supermarket, and there was this uh, pressure to transform into something, making into a meaningful use. But I think we decided, and I really like uh, Harriet challenging change and change for whom and by whom. In a way, I think the our role at London College of Fashion was to create the partnership with our bite studios, Leighton Green, and do lots of consultation to really understand. What the fashion businesses, who, what the needs of the fashion businesses and aspirations are to actually make this space uh, meaningful and relevant to the local community. Um, yeah, so I think there are some questions now uh, from the audience. Can Can I um, just mention something about what Steve-O has put in the chat? So you said about sorry to hear about gentrification, and it's an interesting one. So Mike, the piece that I created was actually an open. It wasn't sort of one way or the other because obviously. I, uh, um, at one point, I did have a phone call from the council saying, what are you making work about? Because they'd kind of heard. And, uh, and I said, don't worry, it's sort of, um, it's an open thing. So I let it for people to judge themselves. And that's because that's the same, you know, my view about scaffolding, <laughs> uh, my obsession with scaffolding, it, is, is it an improvement? You know, and that's, and so that's what the sort of piece was all about, really. What, what is lost in this process of um, change and gentrification and you know when you talk to the, the people that were in the, the shopkeepers in my case um, you, the real sense of community and that kind of what they the whole the sense of place and it was from all different be backgrounds you know uh, you know the shops are really diverse there and I managed to get a wide range of people to talk to me and so it, I, I, but I create as an artist I create I hope I create something that was quite open question so that people you wouldn't say necessarily I was for or against it was you know, make your own view that this is what could be lost if, you know, if you go behind the sort of shabby facade, this is what's going on behind the scenes. Um, and uh, I have a question for both of you, in fact, talking about this process of um, change. Uh, I'm also interested in the process of change of uh, or transformation of the residents when taking the, uh, and you, Francesco, spend the first the first phase of the project being a resident. Um, Hyatt, of course, was a resident there. So what how do you what what has been this process of transformation for you personally? And what would be your advice um, to uh, anyone um, going to a residency um, for the first mm -hmm. time? Yeah. Um. Uh, would you like who wants to start? Shall I start? Yeah, well, you start. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, uh, so this, pro yeah, I felt transformed. I think it really reinforced my values, which are really to revitalize cultural heritage, uh, foster social engagement, and revitalize local economies, and also enhance environmental stewardship, but also and reinforce also my faction activist role, and also understanding uh, the tension between activating change from within or from outside the system. I knew I was living also with the tension myself of being grateful to get this grant from uh, the borough culture, but also I was very skeptical of all this uh, huge investment in arts and culture for one year, but then what's left beyond the borough culture? You create these expectations in the local residents and then 
uh, are we really making a meaningful change? Uh, but uh, so as well, it helped me also uh, kind of uh, craft my approach to what start working with local uh, government in this but for me my advice is very much to listen to the local community and as well really undertake a process of not knowing and undoing yourself all the time and similar to and definitely co-creation uh, because as uh, Harriet was saying as well we have uh, to uh, decide what's in and what's out as well when I also was putting my exhibitions but uh, actually the best uh, solution will emerge from within the community in a process of co-creation and as well, it's really challenging also our ideas of aesthetics and previous uh, assumptions, but really uh, the co-design together what makes the most sense to the local community. That's my advice. Yeah, and uh, in terms of, for me, I mean, I was so pleased to get a residency. I'd kind of come out of uh, CSM and then the big wide world is like, oh my God, what am I going to do? This is uh, really hard to be kind of be an artist. And so it was a really good route in. And I, I really wanted to test whether the stuff that I was doing in zone one, sort of outdoors, my walking based practice could work in a sort of more um, an outer London borough because um, it's quite a different sort of sense of place and uh, they're very different. And actually, I, I, I you know, I didn't have, I sort of, in my proposal, I put an idea down and actually it sort of changed as I got there um, about what I was going to do. So it was kind of be confident about at times I didn't think I was going to have an end product and I was a bit worried like oh my god this is quite a lot of pressure this is in terms of the, the size of the space that I've got and what's going to come out of this and it was you know because I did a lot of data collection uh, you know all sort of ideas and images and things and sounds and it was all a bit of a mess at one point thinking oh no this is not going to turn out in, a, in any good way um, uh, and they've given me this slot for a show and it's like but actually be confident that you can create something. And if you are, you know, that, that you know, there were times I thought, oh no, this is going to be a mess. But actually, you know, just carry on. And at some point, something innocuous will kind of trigger, trigger an idea. And so hence the, for me, the crossroads where this heritage paints jobs were all on one side. I thought that's the link. That is it. That's the links to fashion, the fashion hub, the, the alterations part the scaffold, all my pictures about the details, it all would come together. And, and it did, it kind of. <laughs> uh, it did brilliantly, um, in fact. Um, so we have just a couple of minutes left and uh, no questions from the audience. So I guess my final question is what, what's next for both of you? Uh, well, actually, I'd like also to announce that uh, Alisa Ruzavina, who is uh, finishing her MA at uh, Central St. Martins, will start a new Arts for the Environment residency in Wolfram Forest in September. Uh, so look out for it. And then uh, uh, as next uh, from the Making for Change Wolfram Forest, uh, I've received another grant from uh, Wolfram Forest Council to deliver a project cut that uses fashion to tackle issues of knife crime and youth violence. And we did that in 2020. And now we are scaling it out to four boroughs across East London. So as well, uh, there will be lots uh, happening. If you, I think you had my details in my slides. Uh, so yeah, that, that's continuing the relationship with the Working Forest community, but also scaling it out across London and still using fashion to activate social change. That's all for me. And um, for me, uh, lockdown was quite tricky. As somebody with the walking based practice it, and, and social engagement, it really kind of like kind of sort of pulled the rug from under the feet as it were so I did a lot of stuff about my home and my home situation uh, which is not really my practice uh, so just to make do um, but so I'm really keen to get back out there and walk and I have put an arts council application together based on stuff that was in Waltham Forest about railway arches but fingers crossed you know we it might not happen yeah thank you <laughs> please everyone cross their fingers um, yeah so it's kind of but uh, I have more confidence that I can do stuff not not just in central London, you know, it, it, with an urban practice, I can do it in a, other places, even near where I live. So, yeah, onwards and upwards, hopefully. But fingers crossed a lot. Yeah, fingers crossed. And we look forward to um, new updates from you, uh, new developments. So I think it's time to finish, to close here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Francesco, Hyatt, um, again, for um, sharing your experiences with us, your projects, ideas, 
And thank you everyone for attending. Thank you to the postgraduate community uh, for supporting the, the series. And hopefully we'll be um, organizing something, something new um, soon. But for now, please check the YouTube channel um, to, um, uh, to watch the previous talks and to watch the recording of this talk and uh, the postgraduate community and the AER page for uh, new updates. So thank you, everyone. Have a nice afternoon. Bye. 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 Bye.